In this unit, we will introduce probability generating functions, or PGFs for short. We will give their formal definition, and we will look at how we can derive them for a given discrete random variable. A probability generating function, or PGF for short, for a random variable x is defined to be the sum of tx times the probability x is x. Now, since the probability that x is x is as good as zero for a continuous random variable, PGFs are only defined for discrete random variables. Now, you'll recall that for a discrete random variable, the expectation of a function of x is equal to the sum of the function of x times the probability function. So we can see that the PGF is equal to the expectation of t to the x. What is t? Well, t is a dummy variable that we made up for this definition. Why would we do this? Well, probability generating functions were invented, unsurprisingly, to generate probabilities for discrete random variables. However, they can also be used to obtain the mean invariance more easily and for proving distributional results. So how do we derive probability generating functions? Well, essentially, there's a three-step method, and we'll show this via an example. In this example, we're going to derive the PGF for a distribution with probability function of p times q to the power of x minus 1, where x can take the values of 1, 2, 3, and so on. This is actually a type 1 geometric distribution. Now, step one of our method is to substitute the probability function into our probability generating function formula. Recall that the PGF was defined to be the sum of tx times the probability function. So substituting in our probability function into this formula gives the sum of tx times p times q to the x minus 1. Now it would be great if we could sum this into a simple answer. Well to do that, we'll do step 2, which is to write out the first couple of terms. So we can see what's happening. When t is equal to 1, we'll have t to the 1, which is t, times p, times q to the 0, which just gives us tp. When t equals 2, we have t to the 2, times p, times q to the 1. So t squared, pq. When t is equal to 3, we'll have t to the 3, times p, times q squared. So t cubed, pq squared. And so on. Well, that's enough terms for us to see the pattern. So our final step is to sum this using either geometric series or the standard series expansions given on page 2 of the tables. Well, we can see that in this case, we have an infinite geometric series, with first term, denoted by A, equal to TP, and common ratio, denoted by R, equal to TQ. Recall that the sum of an infinite geometric series is A over 1 minus R. So we'll have tp over 1 minus tq. Now recall also that the summation of an infinite geometric series is only defined if the common ratio is between minus 1 and 1. So we require tq between minus 1 and 1. Or rearranging that, we require t to between minus 1 over q and 1 over q. Well, let's have a look at applying this three-step method to a second slightly messier example. We wish to derive the PGF for a Poisson distribution, which has probability function of the exponential of minus mu times mu to the x over x factorial. And this is defined for x is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. So once again, step 1 is to substitute our probability function into the PGF formula. The PGF, if you recall, was the sum of t to the x times the probability function. So substituting that in, we obtain the following. Now in order to sum this series, we're going to do step two, which is to write out the first couple of terms, so we can see what's going on. When x is equal to zero, we have t to the zero, times e to the minus mu, times mu to the zero, over zero factorial. And that simplifies to e to the minus mu. When x is equal to one, we'll have t, e to the minus mu, times mu, over one factorial. And that simplifies to t mu, e to the minus mu. When x is equal to 2, we'll have t squared times e to the minus mu times mu squared over 2 factorial. And that simplifies to t squared mu squared e to the minus mu over 2 factorial. And so on. 
Now it's not immediately clear what's going on, so if we take out a factor of e to the minus mu, that might help us see. And step three is to sum this using either geometric series or the series expansions given on page two of the tables. Well, looking at the series inside the brackets, we see that it is not a geometric series, because to get from the first to the second term, we have multiplied by t mu. But to get from the second to the third term, we have multiplied by something different, t mu over two. And so it's not a geometric series. So we'll need to look at the standard series expansions given in the tables. Well, comparing the expression in the brackets with the series expansion of e to the x, which is one plus x plus x squared over two factorial and so on, we see that this series expansion is the same as that in the brackets, but with x equal to t mu. So we sum to e to the minus mu times e to the t mu. We're multiplying exponentials together, we just add their powers, which will give us e to the minus mu plus t mu. Taking out the common factor of mu, we'll have e to the mu times t minus one. We should be able to derive PGFs for all of the standard discrete random variables given in the tables. The Bernoulli, the binomial, the Poisson, the geometric, and the negative binomial. Finally, let's look at how we can use probability generating functions to generate probabilities. Now, the definition of a PGF is the sum of t to the x times the probability function. Expanding this summation, we have the probability x is 0, plus t times the probability x is 1, plus t squared times probability x is 2, and so on. And we can actually see that the probability that x is k is the coefficient of the t to the k term in the series expansion of the PGF. And so we can use this rule to determine probabilities given a distribution's PGF. Let's have a look at an example. Suppose we take the PGF that we derived in our first example, which is tp over 1 minus tq. To obtain the probabilities, we're going to need the series expansion of this PGF. We'll write in this more convenient form, that's tp times 1 minus tq all to the minus 1. Expanding 1 minus tq to the minus 1 using the binomial expansion given in the tables, we'll have tp times one plus minus one times minus tq plus minus one times minus two over two factorial times minus tq squared, and so on. Simplifying the expression in the brackets, we get tp times one plus tq plus t squared q squared, and so on. Multiplying this out, this gives us our series expansion. Okay, now we have our series expansion, we can use our rule to find the probabilities. The probability x is zero is the coefficient of the t to the zero term, i.e. the term with no t's. Well, since we have no terms with no t's, the probability x is zero must be zero. The probability x is one is the coefficient of the t term. And so we can see that the probability x is one is p. The probability x is two is the coefficient of the t squared term. And so we can see that the probability x is two is pq. Similarly, the probability x is three is pq squared and so on. However, if we knew that the distribution was a geometric series, it would be easier just to look up the probability function in the tables. Here's a summary of what we've covered in this unit.